Hey guys, Ostrog Vox here, and welcome back to another episode of Crystal Clear. Before I jump into this episode, I would like to announce that the Roundtable has launched a Patreon. While obviously it's optional and you don't have to pledge any money to it, it would really help us out, help me out, and help speed up production on videos outside of Crystal Clear. Although it would give me more time to research topics and edit videos for Crystal Clear. But I'll go more in depth on the Patreon, the rewards on the Patreon, and the other hosts of the Roundtable, and another video I'll make later today. While I'm the main host of the roundtable, I'm not going to be the only one making videos on here. Anyways, let's get to today's theory. First things first, Jasper's not dead. I wasn't really planning on making a video on this topic in theory, but I was absolutely shy to see how many people thought Jasper actually died in Super Watermelon Island. That? That wasn't a death. That was the writers putting Jasper aside so they could focus on the development of Lapis and Peridot. I mean, could you imagine the stress on the show if they had to focus on Lapis, Peridot, and Jasper developing them all at the same time? I'm no showrunner, even though I like to be in the future, but I don't think they could have done that in a way that would have been satisfying for the viewer. With that being said, it looks like these next few episodes of TV Universe will be more laid-back, slice-of-life fun episodes. At least, if Steven floats in two shorts to ride is any indicator. But I'm sure, after those batch of episodes, Jasper will return. We know little to nothing about her character. And believe it or not, she does have character. On September 10th, 2015, Matt Burnett, one of the writers of Steven Universe, stated this about Jasper. She's probably a white, blue, red. A complicated character, as people will eventually find out. Now this tweet only has 30 retweets and 54 likes. So it's not that surprising that not many people know about it. But we haven't seen that complicated character from Jasper yet. We've only had her in the return in Jailbreak, a trippy sequence in Chili Ted. You. Jasper! You. 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 No! And of course, Super Watermelon Island. But what does white, blue, red even mean? From what I can gather, this is a reference to Magic the Gathering. So I'm gonna try to explain this while understanding it myself. Now, according to the Magic the Gathering wiki, white is the color of order, light, and healing. White creatures lay down the law and enforce it. Yep, sounds like Jasper. Many white cards represent knights, castles, and soldiers. Yep, sounds like Jasper. <laughs> Others represent creatures that live on the plains. Angels are powerful protectors in the sky, and clerics protect the weak and injured. It is not necessarily good, though white will often present itself in this way. So yeah, Jasper definitely enforces the law. And although we haven't seen her protect the weak and injured, I could imagine her protecting injured gems on Homeworld, or injured Homeworld gems during the gem war. Although I can also just picture her yelling, GET UP, and laying down some tough love on them. Next up is blue. Blue is an ally of white. The color represents the the color represents the deep sea and endless sky. The strength of blue magic lies in trickery and manipulation. Yep, sounds like Jasper forcing Lapis to fuse. Come on, just say yes. Blue mages work behind the scenes, scheming and stealing secrets, controlling their environments completely before making a move. Blue spells and abilities focus on borrowing opponents' cards and drawing the right card at the right time. With the power of blue. Call wizards and weird beasts of the air and oceans to serve you. From what we've seen, Jasper is pretty tricky and very manipulative. And I don't mean just trying to force Lapis to fuse. She's verbally manipulative, trying to put Garnet down for her being a fusion. Trying to make her feel weak. Trying to make all the crystal gems feel weak. Some lost defective pearl? A puny overcooked runt? And this shameless display? Your base is taken. Your armies are ruined. You have failed! Fusion is just a cheap tactic to make weak gems stronger. Quit embarrassing yourselves. I've seen what you really are. You only beat me because you're a fusion. How long did they keep you trapped here on this miserable hunk of rock? They kept you prisoner. They used you. The manipulation is strong in this one. Next up, and finally brings us to red, which is interestingly enough, 
an enemy of white and blue. Red comes from the mountains in the fiery heat of the world itself. Red magic is filled with fire, frenzy, and storms of rock and lava. Its creatures are warlike and dangerous, ranging from mighty dragons to hordes of rampaging goblins. Mages who master red magic have no patience for talk. They act quickly and recklessly. Red mages can channel their wild emotions to crush the ground you walk on, or to wield flame like a living weapon. Yeah, this really aligns with Jasper. She's definitely warlike. She's definitely dangerous. She definitely has no patience. The whole point of coming here was to check on the cluster! Stop singing! Rose Quartz takes priority. Get back to the bridge and set a course for Homeworld. And she definitely acts quickly and recklessly. So now that we have all the colors down that Burnett said re represented Jasper, we can get a feel that she can be caring. She most definitely has a soft spot for her somewhere. But she puts the law of Homeworld first. She lives to serve. But she's reckless and impulsive. She speaks with her fist, not her words. To her, battles are a conversation. So, for someone like Steven to get through her, to help redeem her, is going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort. But, it could be done. Keep all of this in mind for my theory. And before I go into my theory, I want to discuss another popular theory that some people are taking as fact. That when Jasper fell off in Super Watermelon Island, she began falling all the way down to the cluster. And that she'll land there and unbubble the cluster, or even fuse with it. And I say, no. Keep in mind, Jasper does not know what the cluster is. She does not have the exact coordinates because they had to go to the moon base for it. We still need the cluster's exact coordinates in order to drill. Keep in mind that Mask Island is very far away from the temple and very far away from the barn, where they drilled the hole to the cluster. And guess what? They had to drill through countless of layers of rock and magma. Yeah, sorry, but I don't think a fall could break through all of that. And since Jasper doesn't know where the cluster is, I don't think she would spin Dash her way down to the cluster if she's even powerful enough to do that. Which she probably is, although I don't think she'd do it for the two hours it takes to get to the cluster. So, where is Jasper? Now, as everyone has pointed out, when Malachi unfused, we did not see Jasper's face at all. Where's Jasper's gem? On her face. So what's the conclusion we can all go to? Jasper's gem is cracked. Which means she will start glitching out, just like Amethyst did. Show me your gem, Besh! I'm not gonna get any word. Even on your jacket. And if they don't do something soon, she may start becoming corrupted. So, here's where my theory comes in. In the leaked episode guide last summer, there was an episode named Alone at Sea. Some will be speculating this episode is Jasper being alone at sea, but here's what I believe. Somehow Steven will get stranded on a boat. Or one of those little floaty boats. How? Well, any reason really. He could be fishing with Greg. He could get sucked into some onion shenanigans. After all, Yelltail does have a boat, which he's always on. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Onion would prank Steven and leave him stranded at sea. Well, why doesn't Steven just use his floating powers? That could work too. Once he's stranded at sea, Steven starts floating home. And what does he see? Jasper floating alone. Because Steven is the lovable, kind person he is, he's gonna go check up on her when he discovers that her gem is cracked, and she's definitely glitching out. Jasper, of course, doesn't want his help, and tries to fight him, but once again, because he's glitching out, she's pretty vulnerable and weak, which sparks the Jasper redemption arc, in which we finally get to know that complex character Jasper is. She begins to open up to Steven, but also tells Steven about the dark gem war, and Rose's dark side, and we finally get to know the warrior, the rebellion leader that is Rose Quartz. It can't all be sunshine and rainbows, Jasper and her redemption arc will bring to the table a side of Steven Universe we have yet to fully explore. But these are all my thoughts and ideas. And with that being said, this episode of Crystal Clear has come to a close. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. If you have a dollar or two to spare, pledge to our Patreon. The more you pledge, the cooler the bonuses. And of course, comment your thoughts down below. The point of these videos is to create a discussion. Awestruck Vox, signing out! People see me and think they're safer. No. But it's not really me they're seeing. <gasps>
No. 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 Holy whoa! I just talked to a girl!